Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Steve Higgins. He's with the University of Kentucky as Director of Agriculture there. Good morning, Steve. Hey, good morning to you. Well, Steve, today we're going to talk about a topic that I've been getting several calls about and then something that livestock producers are always on the top of their mind and that's waterers. Yes, it is. I mean, it is a, in my opinion, it is a neglected nutrient. We just don't consider how much the quality and quantity of water that animals need, as well as the delivery of it so that they can get an adequate amount for the production. Yeah, and I know that you've done some work and out at Eden Shell at the farm there with tire waters. Yes, I am big on recycling and repurposing, basically taking, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. So we have been using uh, essentially large construction tires, not tractor tires, but you know, off-road vehicle like payloaders and things like that. We've been using those tires. We start by basically cutting one of the sidewalls out and we basically just use um, a sawzall for that. And, and we rig it up. So basically we just cut that sidewall out. And then what we do in is we get the front end of, of the tractor and we actually loop a chain through underneath the tire uh, sidewall so we can lift it up because if, once it starts cutting and it starts sagging, then you're gonna pinch the blade. And, uh, and so we lift it up and that helps out, but you don't want to get your fingers caught in there because something happens. I mean, it, it would really pinch them. We also rig up a, um, a spray bottle with a combination of water and soap suds. And we have to have one person basically or, or two operating the sawzall. And you have to have someone that's basically squirting the blade in order to keep it cool, keep the rubber smell down. Because once that rubber starts heating up, it gets sticky and it's going to impede the blade. So if you can keep it lubricated, then you can, you can kind of go around the, uh, the sidewall of the tire in a, in a pretty efficient fashion. Once you get that sidewall out, then basically you just place the tire where you want it. Theoretically, you've already ran a supply line and a drain line up through the center hub on the bottom. And then you just run that up and then basically you just terminate the drain at the height appropriate to have an overflow. And uh, rig up any kind of float that you want to pick. We've gotten ours from different places. You can order plastic um, valves online, get some really good performance ones. Some people just typically just go to the farm store and just get basically, um, what I, I like the, uh, what I call a flying saucer floats, but it's basically a round uh, stainless steel disc. It's about two and a half, maybe three inches thick, probably about a foot wide. And it has the chain that comes up through the center of it. So you can adjust the float without, you know, getting submerging your hands in freezing cold water to make some adjustments as an example. Once you get the, the supply line up and the drain line up, then basically you just come back in and pour concrete uh, to, to seal the inside of the tire. Um, some people just go with sealing the center hub that comes up, you know, where the plumbing is coming up through there. But I have found that I actually like to pour more concrete than that. I actually pour concrete in the sidewalls uh, because the hub is actually going to be elevated because of how it's configured and and so you'll have this raised hub and that'll be a center concrete section. But if you just do the center with concrete, what that leaves you with is about 40 to 60 gallons worth of slop water that you have to bucket out if you want to clean it completely out, which is tedious. So if you pour concrete in the sidewalls and then slope it towards the drain, then you can drain all of it out. So, and if you go with a, a large diameter drain, something like a, a three inch or more, um, when you pull the plug on that, it'll create a vortex in there that'll actually do a lot of sediment removal in the tire as well. The cattle are going to reach over probably about nine inches, you know, and get the water. And then you want to have that water up to the top within, say, two or three inches of the top. But you have to have a supply rate that can replenish it so that multiple cattle can drink. Being a circle, you can get more animals around it than any other shape. And which also means that you have more than one animal drinking at a time, which is a rule. You need to have at least 10% of your animals drinking at one time. And with that huge volume of water, they can get what they want within a matter of minutes and then they leave, which makes a spot for another animal to come up. And all of those sound like great advantages and things that people might be able to implement on their farm. Now, if they want more information, there's a publication that we have that you can refer back to, it gives you a lot more details about the installation advantages and disadvantages. And Steve, I certainly appreciate you visiting with us today. And if you have any questions, make sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.